What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about an add-on that allows you to use AI inside of Blender in order to create interesting new renders. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so AI Render is a free tool that you can download from the Blender market and I'll link to it in the notes down below. Um, there's a few different versions in here, but basically there's the free version that you can download and install, or there's a couple versions that allow you to support future development. Um, as far as I know, all of those versions are exactly the same. Um, it's just a question of if you wanna to pay to support the development or not. And so basically what this tool does is it's an add-on that you install and it allows you to generate AI generated images from your models by giving it a text prompt and also picking some styles. So um, it's pretty easy to use. So the way that it works is when you jump over into Blender, um, when you first install this, so you wanna start by installing the zip file that comes with that obviously, but then, but then inside of your add-on section, you're going to wanna to check the box for render AI render. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to link into the service Dream Studio. And so you can sign up for Dream Studio for free just by clicking on the button right here. And then you're going to sign up for Dream Studio. So once you do that, it's gonna look something like this. Now this is a tool where you can come in here and you can actually type in different prompts. So like for example, this is the basic prompt that it starts with, but you could also type in something like, you could type in a description looking for like a space battle or something like that. And what this is going to do, um, and you wanna to agree to the terms of service, but what this is going to do is this is gonna go through and this is going to generate those images with AI. So Dream Studio is kind of a standalone tool that's going to do that. But notice how when you do this, this is going to use AI in order to generate those images that you've described. And obviously, um, sometimes you can get some kind of weird results with AI. Um, that's something that I think is going to continue for a while, um, but you can see the power of what this tool can do. And so note that this tool gives you a certain number of of credits and once you use your certain number of credits then in order to do more work you're going to have to purchase some additional credits right here so you get a few credits in order to start off and if you want to keep using it here or in blender um, what it's going to do is it's going to ask you for those credits now what we want specifically is we want this API key so you can find that by clicking on the button in the upper right hand corner and under your account you can click on this copy button in order to bring down your API key I'm gonna go ahead and click on confirm um, right there. And then we're gonna jump back into Blender. What you wanna do is you wanna paste that API key in this box right here. Then this is going to be able to access Dream Studio in order to create your renderings. And so now what we wanna do is let's go ahead and let's create a simple rendering. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just by using my Bonnie file and I'll probably bring in an environment. All right, so I'm just gonna add a dome with the HDRI maker add-on, um, which I can link to in the notes down below if you want to learn more about that. But basically what I want to do is I just want to set this up to create a render. And so in order to do that, what you need to do is you need to start by adding a camera. So I'm just going to do a shift A, add a camera, and you need to be in that camera view. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock my camera to my view. And I'll just set up a view kind of like this. And we're going to have to adjust that a little bit more in a second anyway. So I've got my camera all set up, but now what I want to do is I want to go into my render settings right here, or my render properties. So if you click on render properties, there's an option down here for AI render. And so what you need to do is click on the option for enable AI render. And so when you do this, what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to set your image size, right? So you've got 512 by 512, 768 by 768. There's an other option in here and it looks like your maximum is 2048. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with this 768 by 768. But notice how now what this does is this gives me the ability to put this prompt in here. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to give this a prompt. So um, the prompt is going to be whatever we want this to, um, whatever you want the image to be. It's the description of what you want the image to be. So note that there are full articles out there um, talking about how to create different AI prompts. Um, I can link to this one in the notes down below, but your prompt is gonna be really important um, because it's going to des describe certain things that, um, that this is going to use in order to create your rendering. And so in this case, for example, what we could do is we could type in something like a statue of a border collie. Or you could even say like a stone statue of a border collie. And then once you're done typing that in, what this would do is you would go up to your render and it's going to render that image 
And then once it renders that image, it's going to apply the artificial intelligence to it. So notice how it creates that rendering first, and then this is gonna come in here and it's going to change. And that's going to take a second for it to do that, but you can see that it's gonna come in here and it's going to change the way this is rendered so that you get a different result. Now. Obviously, right, with um, obviously with AI, you can get some kind of like odd results. It clearly hasn't figured out like dog eyes or anything like that, but you can see how it's coming in here and it's kind of changing the style and adjusting this. Now note that every time that you run this, you are going to be using up some of your credits with that Dream Studio. So just be aware of that. Um, at some point, you might have to purchase some additional credits if you wanna keep using this tool. Okay, and so if we look at a more complex model, like this is the example model from uh, a geometry node setup called Village Inn. I can link to that um, in the notes down below, but basically it's just a village, right? Well, what we would do is if we wanted to use this tool, we would click on the button for render properties. We'd go down and enable your AI render. And in this case, I'm gonna set this to 512 by 512 just for performance. But notice what we can do is not only can we add a prompt as well as a negative prompt, which is saying don't include whatever, right? You can also do this in different styles. So for example, I could select this Hudson River School. That's gonna be the style that this creates. And then I'm just gonna type in in the prompt, a small village on a sunny morning, like this. So now if I jump over into render, what that's going to do is that's gonna render this out and then it's gonna apply that to it and it's gonna apply that style. So notice what it's doing is it's coming in here and it's taking that general shape that we had in there and then applying that style to it. And we could always come back and run it again. So if we rerun the render, it's going to re-render it and then apply whatever we've selected in here. It can be really close to what you've created or really far away. And you can kind of adjust that a little bit in your advanced options, right? So right now my image similarity is set to like 0.4. If I wanted this to be more like the image that I have, I could type in like a 0.7 or something like that and re-render this. So notice how this image is a lot closer than the last image that we created. But we could also come in here and apply a different style to this, right? So if you decide, for example, that you don't like this Hudson River School, um, let's go with something a little bit more out there. So we'll go with this Dan Mumford style right here. But now, if we rerun that render, right, click on render image and rerun it, it's going to apply that style to our image instead. So notice how that's different with the brush strokes and everything else that's in here. And again, depending on how much freedom you wanna give it, you can adjust that image similarity. And so one cool thing about this is if you do want to rerun this without re-rendering the Blender file first, you can just click on the new image from last render button under the operation. So notice what it's doing is it's regenerating this without re-rendering. So if you have a heavy model or something like that, this can be a great tool from that. That new image from last image um, is going to use the last image as a starting point. So um, instead of you doing a re-render and it doing something completely new, um, this will probably get you a little bit closer results to what you had. Um, you can also check the box for saving before and after images if you want to do that. But just remember like the more or the less similarity that you put in here, the more out there your results can be. So it's just kind of a question of what you're trying to achieve. So I'll link this tool in the notes down below if you want to give it a try. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool or about AI in general. Please keep it civil because I know there's a lot of emotions around the topic, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.